everyone, Tim the Collect Jurassic, and we're back with yet another toy unboxing from Mattel. It's just that time of year. The third wave of the Dino Escape figures are all rushing out. If you've been watching the channel, we've done tons of reviews for Fierce Force, for the Camper Packs, and now we're moving on to some bigger dinos. And I'm really excited about this one. I'm doing a one-off review versus reviewing other figures in the assortment because this one's just so cool and so special to me. It's the Roar Attack Kentrosaurus. I've always loved Kentrosaurus since I was a kid. I had this really cool like Tyco Dino Riders Kentrosaurus. So getting one from Mattel is definitely something special. And this one's uh, by all accounts looks awesome. It's it's big. I don't know if that is conveyed over a camera because when I got it, I was like, wow, this thing's big. So we'll do some comparisons just to show how big it actually is. It's, it's bigger than you'd think. So pretty cool. Um, we can take a look at the packaging first before we unbox it. We have, of course, that Camp Cretaceous logo with Darius and Toro because, uh, spoiler alert, cover your ears if you haven't seen season four, but uh, this dinosaur is actually in the season uh, quite a lot, actually, and it has a name. It's actually called Pierce. Get it? The spikes on it. So the Kentrosaurus, this figure is literally the exact same version um, as what's in the show. So kind of a fun connection there. They didn't put Pierce on the packaging, but to be fair, they didn't put Barry, they didn't put Graham or, or Limbo or Chaos on the Baryonyx packaging when it first came out. So that's probably why. But on the back, they uh, show how the figure works as well as the other figures in the wave, which are all repaints, Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus. So, um, we're just going to talk about Kentosaurus. This figure is so cool. So enough about the figure in the box. Let's go ahead and free this Stegosaurid from its from its cage. Got a couple of ties to cut, but nothing too crazy. And then the is that everything? That's the main figure. We also have to get the tail out and more spikes, I guess. One spike. Oh, there's multiple spikes in here. Okay, so we have the spikes, two different spikes. I'm guessing they go on both sides. They look symmetrical. Yeah, they don't look like there's one meant to go from the other. So they literally just snap in here. Is that what I'm? Is that what I'm understanding? Oh yeah, easy. They literally just snap in. So there you go. They have little pegs too, so you do them in the right direction. That's clever. That really helps. And then the tail just is gonna snap on. Yeah, just like that. Wow, awesome. Go ahead and reset this figure. Wow, so this thing is incredible. Uh, I'm not faking it. This is an awesome figure. I love this thing. Instantly, now that it's all built, I'm like, wow, this thing is awesome. It's big. Um, it's t got tons of detail. It's heavy. It's a hefty toy. Um, really cool. Oh man, this is cool. Um, the first thing uh, I noticed is just this cool coloration with like these really like contrasted stripes coming down. That's super fun. It also has this sort of lighter color underbelly that's just in the front that goes to the neck, which is cool. And just like a real Kentosaurus, it has the like flatter plates that go into regular plates that then go into all spikes. You will notice the tail is totally unpainted, which does look a little obvious when you look at it from the top down. Um, you know, they could have uh, they could have afforded a little bit more, I guess, darker paint on these top spikes through the back of the tail. That would have helped. But when you're looking at the figure from this direction, um, it, it is a little bit hard to kind of pick it apart from there. But I love how the spikes pop in. I mean, the front view of this guy, you can see all of the... Uh, all the spikes. Let's talk about articulation here. Um, the legs obviously all move. They have a little bit of mobility. Yeah, they have a little bit of mobility um, from outward from the body, then they move front and back. The front legs do the same thing. They also have a hinge that lets you kind of make it uh, lay on the ground more. So you can actually make this thing lay on the ground, sort of like when um, in Fallen Kingdom. So you can do that with the, the front legs uh, the middle part of the body you can move, but it's all tied to the action feature, which we'll get to. The neck is cool because it actually is on a, a somewhat of a ball joint, so it can rotate. It's a rotating joint, so you can rotate left and right. You can move it like this, so she can look up and down and stuff. So, um, and it's got the nice brown paint coming down through it too. So, you can look. You can even look up. So, a lot of cool poses you can do 
with just the base reticulation. Now the action feature, of course, is the roar attack, and they've cleverly hidden the switch up here on top versus you know the Oranosaurus where it was obnoxiously placed. But so this one, like all the roar attacks, has three different modes. And then that's just a slight turn. Yeah, so there's three different modes. There's one, two, oh, sorry, I keep skipping two. One, two, so all the way turns. So you can, and that's kind of cool. You can get it to pose like that, sort of ready to strike. I actually really like that. It's probably how I'll display it just in this. Pool. And the final one makes him swing back. So. So instead of the regular Stegosaurus that swings with its tail, he swings with the front of his body because he has those big spikes. Pretty cool. But I, I gotta say, I love how you the different buttons let you pose him in sort of a, a cool, I don't know if you can see this, but he's totally turned around. Um, rotating i love that that's really really cool so that is the kentra source but i want to do want to compare it to some of the other stegosaurus we have so this is sort of like the medium range version of kentra source we also have the original mattel stegosaurus this is the latest version of it and i think the best version of it i love this thing it, for just a a quick uh it, it does the same thing it does like the same Whole body swings except it doesn't click into place so it's harder to pose but reminiscent of the kentrosaurus so you can see the kentrosaurus is just a little bit smaller not much smaller then of course we have the chialingosaurus too um here so um kind of get a nice spectrum chialingosaurus what's its action oh yeah it does the same thing it, it rotates back and forth so that's something that they all the stegosaurus have in common what i love about these three is that they all have different plate types. You obviously have the regular Stegosaurus with the regular ridges, but um, the Chilingosaurus has some wild looking uh, arrangements of plates and then the Kentrosaurus in the middle. So really nice uh, spectrum of, of uh, Stegosaurids here from Mattel. Um, different sizes, different profiles, different colors, all that stuff. Um, and I think the Kentrosaurus is probably my, my new favorite out of all of these. It's just a really really cool figure um i love all the like detailing throughout it just it's awesome um i'm wondering if when they made this for the show they were able to get the model and actually make a toy off of it because um it's just got a, uh, a lot more i guess realistic proportions um than some of the non-film mattel dinos this thing just feels like it could have been from the movie which is really cool and again I love how you can pose it with the roar attack. So he's he's kind of winding up for a swing. It's so cool. Um, and the fact that they made the spikes pop out so you can put them on afterwards was genius. So you can actually get those um, signature anatomical features of the Kentrosaurus on the figure without having to, like, you know, make them smaller or make them like somehow compromise them so they fit in the box. So they came up with a really cool idea for that. Um, next to a human, this this guy is still, you know, pretty sizable too. That's Alan Grant, an adult, it's supposed to be an adult human. So Kentrosaur is still feeling pretty big. Go ahead and give him a knock. Here, let's swing over here. Sorry, Grant. You're gone. I love it. Seriously, this thing is so fun. I think kids love a lot of fun with that action feature too. Kids love spikes and all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, if I, I guess if I had one thing to pick apart about this figure, it would be that unpainted tail. It's just, it's a, it's a little glaring, but again, it's at the back of the figure, so you don't notice it as well, but it keeps it from being a perfect 10. This, that was what would make this figure perfect. I think everything else about it, it's a great toy. It's hefty. Um, the action feature is super fun. Just missing a little bit of that extra detail. Um, in the tail, but otherwise, uh, that's a minor complaint. I'm really, really happy with this Kentrosaurus. Definitely one of my favorite Roar Attack figures, and definitely my favorite Stegosaur from Mattel. So, um, excellent work there. Um, I think that's all I got to say, though. I hope you enjoyed watching this review. Again, I'm Tim the Collector Asic, and thanks for watching.